Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the last and final part to Weekend of Bakugos, Chapter 19. Aizawa was waiting for them in the common room, leaning against one of the sofas clad in his usual black, but with slippers that definitely had whiskers. I don't want to know. Aizawa sighed as they approached, eyes flicked between Bakugo and the still-floating Izuku. Just follow me. He led them out of the common room and through the already lightning corridors. I'm sorry for waking you so early, Aizawa-sensei, mumbled Izuku as they followed in his wake. Aizawa waved away the apology. I was up anyway, nothing to worry about. Bakugo turned to grin widely at Izuku, who wrinkled his nose and stuck out its tongue. I fucking win. That trading card is mine. They entered the principal's office to see the man-dog rat himself perched behind his desk, dressed impeccably as always despite it being the ass-crack of dawn. If the principal thought Bakugo's Izuku balloon was strange, he didn't say anything, only smiled amicably at them all. On the glossy desk in front of him was a tea tray set for five. We're just waiting on one more, gentlemen, but please. He gestured to the chairs between them and him. Take a seat and help yourselves. As if on cue, the door they had just closed reopened and all might entered, eyes finding Izuku immediately. Young Midoriya, you're ba- What are you doing up there? He exclaimed, as his bony face crinkled into a bemused smile. Izuku began to stammer and Bakugo felt him inch higher. He glanced up at Izuku. He was blushing madly and tripping over his words. Want me to handle it? Bakugo muttered out of the corner of his mouth. Izuku squeaked and nodded, tightening his grip on Bakugo's hand as his feet lifted above his head. Without taking his eyes off Izuku, he said, Nerd got flustered, so Float's acting up. All Might looked from Bakugo to Izuku's bright pink but happy face, and to their joined hands in the middle. He flashed them a wide smile, then poured them all tea. Izuku slowly returned to ground level as they talked through the weekend from his perspective, landing in the armchair next to Bakugo with a soft thump. I was aware of everything that was happening, so I remember everything. But it was almost like watching a recording. Izuku sipped his tea, then shook his head quickly. No, more like playing a video game with limited control options. And all the dialogue was written by a four-year-old. That pulled a chuckle from the room. And I'm very sorry I didn't recognize you on Friday, All Might. Izuku looked mortified at the memory, but All Might just shook his head gently. That's quite all right, my boy. You didn't recognize any of us. What about control of your quirk? Nezu asked over the rim of his own cup. That's more... difficult to explain. It was like I accessed it accidentally, or more naturally. It was easier because it didn't occur to me that I couldn't use it. I don't know if that makes sense. I need to think it over some more. I don't think I could have used the percentage I can now, however. The smaller body probably wouldn't have been able to take the strain. Izuku mumbled, his speech quickening, words beginning to run together. Bakugo could see that he was teetering on the edge of a mutter pit, with his fingers twitching back and forth, taking notes on his thigh in the absence of a notebook. I've fucking missed you. Bakugo cleared his throat, and everyone's attention snapped to him. He hadn't said anything since All Might's arrival. Would it be worth Izuku getting everything down on paper and meeting with you properly later in the week, sir? He addressed Nezu directly. However, in his periphery, he saw Izuku smile at him in his peripheral vision. The principal smiled, furry face giving nothing away before turning back to Izuku. Midoriya, would that be suitable for you? I hear you have quite the talent for quirk analysis, and I'd be lying if I said I haven't been curious to see it in action, he said genially. With a small gasp, Izuka was nodding enthusiastically. Y yes sir, I'd be honored. Nezu clapped his hands together. Excellent, I look forward to it. Now, we will expect you both back in lessons this afternoon, however, visit to Recovery Girl is in order first. I know you said you feel fine, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Off you go now, chop chop. Izuku and Bakugo stood, bowed, and left the office. With the sun now fully up, and the sounds of a school stirring from sleep drifting through the building, they made for Recovery Girls Infirmary. Izuku hadn't stopped muttering since they'd left the office. Bakugo knew he'd barely been holding back the flow, and so had let him ramble uninterrupted. He never admitted out loud, but it was endearing. It was the soundtrack to his life, and he'd missed it. From what he was picking up, Izuku was quickly pulling apart the effects of the quirk, and Nezu could probably expect a full report, typed with appendices, by breakfast tomorrow. As they walked, Bakugo nudged his shoulder, against Izuku's to bring him back to Earth. Oi, nerd, you good? Huh? Izuku looked up, and Bakugo saw his eyes refocus on where they were. 
Oh, yeah, sorry, Kachan. I'm fine, just, you know. He gestured vaguely at his own head. I know, it's okay. Izuka's shoulders relaxed and he smiled, and Bakuka thought it might be his favorite sight in the world. It's a lot before breakfast. Mm-hmm, I'm starving, whined Izuku, causing Bakugo to snort at him. Their fingers brushed then, and Izuka's teeth appeared briefly to worry his bottom lip before he slid his fingers in between Bakugo's, interlacing them together. The intimacy of the move and quiet confidence from Izuku caused Bakugo to stop in his tracks. Izuku turned. This okay? he asked softly. Bakugo knew what he was asking. This wasn't the first time they'd held hands this morning, by any stretch, but this time they weren't running on post-Izuku transformation nerves or post-confession adrenaline now. This time it was, are you sure? Are you still on board? Bakugo looked at Izuku as they stood in the empty corridor, the sun filtering through his curls from the window behind, a slight blush filling the space between his freckles, eyes shining. He swallowed. Okay doesn't cover it. Bakugo nodded mutely and brought his hand up to cup Izuku's cheek. I missed you this weekend, you know, he whispered. They were already close, but Bakugo inched a little closer so Izuku had to tilt his chin up to maintain eye contact. His heart was hammering inside his chest. The blood pounded in his ears as Izuku's eyes flicked down to his mouth. He felt Izuku's free hand settle on his own hip and pull them tighter together. I missed you too, Izuku breathed, barely making a sound. Bakugo leaned in, and Izuku's eyes fluttered closed as their breath ghosted over each other's lips. A door behind them opened, and Izuku yelped as they jumped apart. Bakugo spun round, the embarrassed rage of the caught-in-the-act already on his tongue, only to be confronted with the diminutive figure of Recovery Girl herself. Her smile was knowing, and the glint in her eyes more mischievous than it had any right to be. "'Good morning, boys,' she said sweetly. "'I've been told that you've had a very interesting weekend.' The checkup with Recovery Girl didn't take long. She had raised her eyebrows at Bakugo when her readings had shown that Izuku's pulse rate was elevated, but other than that, she confirmed that Izuku was, as he had said, totally fine. As they had stood up to leave, the infirmary door opened and All Might's bony face appeared. As you're not doing lessons until this afternoon, I wondered if I could steal you both for a spot of breakfast. Izuku's face split into a wide grin and he nodded enthusiastically, before Bakugo could agree or otherwise. Izuku had grabbed his hand once more and was tugging him along in All Might's wake. They arrived at the same staff room as Bakugo had found All Might in on Saturday when he asked about the party. All Might took a seat and they sat across from him, Bakugo's hand still firmly clasped in Izuku's. All Might was beaming at them, causing the corners of his eyes to crinkle, and Bakugo began to shift self-consciously. You look happy, my boys. Bakugo could only duck his head as the tips of his ears went pink, but Izuku... Izuku wore his heart on his sleeve and could hide nothing from his mentor. We are, he blurted out before catching himself. I mean, I am. I, I don't know. I guess, I mean, I'm hoping. Quit rambling, nerd, Bakugo interrupted, and Izuku looked like he was trying to eat his own lips in the effort to stop talking, but Bakugo didn't miss the uncertainty that flashed across those freckles, like a dot to dot of insecurity. Of course I'm happy, too he grumbled, fixing his eyes on Izuku. I tried to kiss you, not an hour ago, for the love of God. He felt as if his face might burn away at the memory and under the combined brightness of the smiles of both the symbol of peace and his successor. Beginning to feel decidedly uncomfortable under the attention, he stood up again. Look, I'll fuck off outside so you can catch up or whatever. He extricated his hand from Izuku's, a little reluctantly. I'll just be in the corridor, he added a little softer to Izuku then grabbed a bowl of rice and his teacup before leaving the two alone. Shutting the door behind him, he slid down to the floor with his legs stretched out in front. The door wasn't soundproof by any means, but he'd been up for several hours already and could easily fall asleep leaning up the door once he'd eaten. I don't think I've ever seen you smile so much, young Midoriya, came All Might's quiet voice drifted through the wood. Oh, I... I didn't realize I was... It's... Kachan, it's been a strange morning, All Might. Izuku replied, a light laugh in his words. Bakugo knew the nerd would be rubbing the back of his own head with one hand, the other wrapped around a teacup. I imagine it has been. I... I... All Might faltered. It was followed by a loud sniff. Bakugo's brow furrowed, and he prepared to get back up to see what had made Izuku cry so quickly. Uh, All Might, what's the matter? All Might? 
Oh, my boy, All Might murmured an uncharacteristic wobble in his voice. I am so happy that you're happy, I thought. I had feared that I may have inadvertently doomed you to spend your life alone when I gave one for all. The life of a hero is hard enough on families, but for us, for holders, with our particular purpose, we have never... It is especially difficult. Even my master had to... I would rather have taken it back. All Might cleared his throat suddenly. But you, if any one of us could find a way to do both... Well, that's the difference, isn't it, All Might? Between me and the others, Izuku said, and Bakugo could hear a vein of steel in it that made him so curious he was letting his rice go cold. What's that, my boy? The other one for all holders didn't have a kach on. The certainty with which Izuku spoke those words made his eyes burn. That Izuku could have that level of faith in him was astounding. The admiration has always been there. And they were now on course to becoming a formidable hero team, but this... Izuku's absolute, unshakable belief that together the two of them could face down a centuries-long fight and not only win, but live? Happily at that, it floored him, and yet Bakugo understood, because in that moment he realized that he felt the same. There was no one on this or any other planet in the universe that Bakugo would rather have by his side. To have his back, to go home to at the end of it all, than Midori Izuku. He knew this now, as sure as he knew gravity kept his feet on the ground. And then he was tipping backwards, and his rice was flying upwards as the door opened unexpectedly. A hand caught the back of his head and stopped him falling all the way. He looked up to see Izuku, mouth twitching. Were you just sitting outside, leaning up the door? Izuku teased, clearly fighting a smile. Bakugo's eyes narrowed and his lips pursed as he recognized his own words from this morning. Fucking clearly, he grunted, standing up. Only a few grains of rice had escaped the bowl. He had knocked over his tea, though. Ah, oh, shit. Izuku only chuckled at him while All Might passed him paper towels so Bakugo could mop up the spillage. Take the bowl with Bakugo, you've barely eaten any of it, All Might said, pushing extra into Izuku's hands before waving them off up the corridor, like a grandparent, bidding goodbye to his favorite grandchildren. Izuku and All Might had talked for long enough that the other students were in lessons, and so the walk back to the common room was quiet and quick. What you said about the difference between the others and you... Bakugo ventured as they entered the empty dorm building. Izuku nearly dropped the bowls onto the countertop as he whipped around, stammering already. I... I just mean that... that, you know, we're stronger together, and... Bakugo sighed and closed the distance between. Izuku barely had time to widen his eyes before their lips were pressed together. It was soft and a little clumsy. This, too, was a first for both of them. Bakugo decided right then and there that this was his new favorite thing, he held Izuku's face in his hands, and Izuku covered them, with his own, and nothing else existed outside of that moment. He broke the kiss, but didn't let go. Didn't go far at all. He only nudged Izuku's nose with his own. I know what you meant, nerd, Bakugo said. I get it. I feel the same. We've got a lot of shit to do, and it won't be easy. Some of it's gonna fucking suck, but we're also totally fucking awesome. Izuku laughed a little then. Nodding, and Bakugo continued. There's no one I'd rather fight alongside than you. There's no one I'd rather live alongside than you. There ain't nothing else like you anywhere, Izuku. You're... You're... He finally ran out of steam. Green eyes began to swim with tears, but Izuku's voice was steady when he said, I'm just yours, Kachan. Bakugo's chest simply swelled with affection for the guy in his arms, and Izuku went up onto tiptoes to close the gap between them again. Sure, there were lessons to attend that afternoon, and they'd have to deal with the class interrogations and teasing. They'd eventually have to go through all the pictures from the weekend and laugh and call their parents. Then deal with that interrogation, too. And if that evening, there was a soft knock on Bakugo's door, and Izuku would be there saying that he couldn't sleep, well, neither could Bakugo. There was so much more after that to come, better and worse. For now, however, it was just the two of them, giddy at their own luck, and the uncharted territory of everything that lay before them. For now, they were just two teenagers, falling in love for the first time, as they kissed and kissed and kissed in the silent common room. All right, listeners, 
This concludes Weekend at Bakugos. I really do hope you all enjoyed this one. It's probably one of my favorite Bakudeku fix, especially when it comes to uh, de-aging quirks as well. It's probably one of my favorites. I, there's a ton of really good ones out there for sure for de-aging fix, but I just, I really like this one a lot. It just always stuck with me ever since I first read it. So let me know your thoughts and reactions to this as well. If you like the fic, like always, I'll say, if you have an opportunity to slide over to AO3 and leave comments and kudos to the original author, I'm sure it would be much appreciated. And as always, thank you so much for listening.